I guess when you go to the theatre, what you want is an experience that feels um, that that allows you to escape from your life. The amazing thing about sitting in a theatre, it's the same in a cinema, but it's something about theatres where there's as much behind the curtain as there is in front of it, that you're in a box sharing this experience that will only happen that night. That mm. particular version of that show will only happen that night. And there's something about musicals that help that sense of transcending or uh, escaping reality. There's something about a world where people can sing and where music is an element of how we express ourselves that allows us to shed reality when it's good of course it can it's very hard to do that if you if you don't take the audience with you the the songs make them feel um, uh, isolated from the experience you know but but when it's done right it's just it's like um songs are like soliloquies you know that they allow characters to say this is how i'm feeling without it being like this is how i'm feeling There's no doubt Matilda probably in an almost unprecedented way allows kids to carry the narrative. I mean, the way Matthew and Dennis um, de uh, designed the story so that kids could carry it without having too much kids acting on kids. Because kids, when they act with kids, um, struggle. They, they're brilliant at at other stuff, at telling the truth in song and in storytelling. Matilda, Matilda's, most of her lines, she's telling a story to the librarian and therefore to us. Kids are amazing at that. You get them acting at each other and it's difficult, so it's incredible how we manage to allow kids to drive the narrative without leaving them alone and unsupported on stage too long. That said, part of why it works is because the casting department and we as creatives had absolute faith that these 10 year old, 9, 10, 11 year old girls who play this role, um, we knew we'd find them. To be an artist you need to be bringing a worldview to your craft. Whether you're a writer and you're taking the ideas of the world and putting them in a musical or a play or a short story or onto a canvas, or you're an actor and you're a vessel for someone else's words, you still have to bring your sense of the world into your art. So mostly I say do other stuff, <laughs> you know, read books and think and try to understand the world as much as you can and be honest and ruthless in your pursuit of truth and all that stuff. know if you ever feel quite like a grown-up. Actually, once you have kids and they grow up a bit, you, you're sort of forced into feeling a bit like a grown-up because you have to pretend to be one of your kids all the time. I, I'm, for someone who ended up in the arts so thoroughly immersed as I, I didn't have aspirations to be an artist, not because I didn't think it was all wonderful, just because I wasn't particularly talented or you know I didn't get the lead roles in the school play or you know I got kicked out of the choir and for not turning up or something and that was that was my career at, at school and I think I thought music and and acting was for special people and uh, so when I left school and my kids went and auditioned for Whopper and NIDA and stuff I thought oh wouldn't it be great to be one of the sort of people who could do that I mean I didn't even audition because I didn't think just didn't think I was that. And, uh, and then I started writing scores for theatre and then doing a few plays and stuff and I just very slowly realised I was allowed. I sort of got permission by virtue of just doing it on a small level. But um, when I was a kid I thought I'd be a, probably thought I'd be a teacher. I mean I thought I'd be a farmer when I was like six. And, but I thought I'd be an alright teacher and I think um, I'm still very, very passionate about people who are teachers and I feel that part of my role in the work I do is to be a teacher, without a doubt. And I don't think you have to be a teacher to teach. When I got asked whether I wanted to work on Matilda, I, my comedy career was taking off and I, I sort of thought, oh, am I going to go back to writing kids' theatre? It seems like a weird thing to do now that I'm touring and I'm 
hey, I'm a rock star. And, um, but I, I knew, I felt incredibly, I felt threatened by the Royal Shakespeare Company and by Matthew Watchus and Dennis Kelly. And this, I felt like, oh, maybe they should get someone more experienced or whatever. But I didn't feel threatened by Dahl because I'm just, I fed on Dahl. My cells are made of Dahl, you know. I thought there's probably better composers in the world, but I didn't think there was anyone, I didn't, I didn't feel like, when it came to the Dahl, I'm like, no, I'm your guy. Oh, of course. I mean, that's what art is. It's public commentary. Um, I mean, there's a lot, you know, art is entertainment, and I, I don't think my primary role as an entertainer is to teach, but it's absurd to say it's one or the other. I mean, historically, of course, art and, and politics, art and knowledge, art and um, rebellion and protest, uh, of course, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and the, the Pell song was definitely quite judgmental, but it made a very, very deliberate point about people who think they deserve respect because of their position as opposed to their ethics. And this show says the same thing, not that I'm comparing them, but it says Matilda stands up to a person who, by dint of her position in society, has not been held to account in her ethics. And um, I'm not the judge and jury. I just made a comedy song. I didn't choose for it to do what it did. It hit a mark that people felt very... I didn't get it released. I didn't make money off it. No one put ads on billboards. Not like Andrew Bolt, who's, you know, pushed by a corporation all the time. I'd play Everything is Awesome. <laughs>